All right, I have already pre-mixed the two tints and the two shades for this worksheet. Um, the main hue means that you don't mix it with anything out of the container. So um, each of these has a number corresponding with the numbers that are mapped out in the shapes in the apple that you need to match. And we are shading um, shapes in here to get the implied value of the shaded form. So first thing I would start with, because this is the easiest and you won't have to mix anything, is to paint all of your number threes, which are your main hue. Okay, so load up a flat brush and paint in the square first. Remember to cut in your edges, make sure your paint is nice and smooth. Don't go out of your shape like I did here. It's okay, that's just gonna get covered up anyways. And when you wash your brush, make sure you Gently scrub it in the bottom of your water container and then dry it out. Squeeze it in between paper towel. Do not leave it in the water container because then all of the glue in the bristles lets go and your bristles fall out and then it's no good. All right, so carefully cut in to each of the shapes that have the number three. And if your brush is too big, then get a smaller brush that fits the size, but try to use the biggest brush available so you can fill in more of the space at once. But obviously if it's too tight, then get something smaller. Watch how you're holding the brush. You'll have to turn your hand. And if you need to, you can turn your paper. There's a lot of little, a lot of edge pieces in here. So I'm gonna do this bigger space and then use a smaller brush to cut in closer. And if you go over some of these other shapes a little bit, that's okay, because you're gonna go back with a new color anyways and fill that in. Do, 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 do. Use my smaller brush, and if you kind of twist it a little bit. gets all the bristles back to a point. This is a round brush, so I can fit in tighter spaces and paint lines. There's a lot of number three area. Okay. 
And you can use any color to paint your apple in here. Um, you can make it blue if you want. But you are just using one color for the whole thing. This is monochromatic, which means one color or one hue and different values of that hue. Lighter values are tints and darker values are shades. Just about done with this. And then there's a little bit on the leaf. And there should have been a little dividing line there, so I'm just going to stop because that goes into, um, actually, this is supposed to be three, not one, this area. That was my bad. I redid some of the number spacing on, here, on this worksheet. the rest of the top part of the leaf. And you're trying to use as big a brush strokes as you can to fill the space quicker. There we go. Okay, one, one, two. That looks like I got all the three. So now I can go to um, one of my next colors, which I'm gonna do the um, tints next. So this is my number two, because it's a, a little bit lighter than the middle value, which is the pure hue. And I'm just mixing a tiny bit of water in here because my temper paint was a little dried out. Um, okay, so pick up number two and fill in The square on the value scale first. Turn your hand so your brush fits in the space properly. Cut in. Good. Rinse out your brush. Wipe it dry, squeeze it in between paper towel. And then we can start painting all of the number two spaces. So this is the darker of the tints. There's number two, this space is number two. And I went over that one a little bit, but that's okay, because I can go back and go over those lines. Tempera is water-soluble, so it's not ever totally dry. It'll dry, but if you re-wet it, it'll um, rehydrate. This top of the stem is number two. This little piece is number two here. And 
this little spot. So try to follow the contours, make sure you're turning your hand and your wrist so you can properly properly paint the lines of each of the shapes in here. All right, all of this funky shape is a number two. Cut in close. And wiggle over here. This exercise is good for your hand control practice. My bristles were getting a little spread out, so just bringing it back. And if you twist it, twist it around a little bit, it'll put them back in a point. And this little shape's a number two. I see I missed a little bit of number three over there. I can get, get that a little bit later. And that looks like all of number twos. I'm gonna fill in that little spot that I missed from number three. All right, let's move on to the lightest tint, which is number one. And remember, when you when you mix your tints, you want to start with white and then add the color into the white. This lightest tint is mostly white with just the tiniest amount of orange in it. Get all these little highlights or lighter values. And a little bit over here. And that looks it for one. Oh, and I forgot to fill this in, so I'm gonna clean my little brush, dry it, <clears throat> fill this space in. clean that and then we'll go to number four which is the lighter shade so this one when you mix your shades you start with the hue or the pure color and you just start with adding a little bit of black in to get your number four <clears throat> because black is really overpowering so if you put too much in it gets way too dark too fast. Okay. So here's our number four. Sometimes you just kind of press and wiggle with the brush. It makes a better line. All right, 
There's number four. And over here, I've got um, a couple bigger pieces, but most of the, the rest of them are really small. So I'm gonna do most of this with a small brush if I need to put like a little bit in here, but I don't wanna do too much because it will go over my lines and I do want these lines to be clean because the borders surrounding it already have another color there. <clears throat> there. All right, and the rest I want to do with my small brush. Twist it a little bit before you start painting with your brush so the bristles go back together. Cut, cut in, cut in. We're almost done. More than halfway. Tight little spaces here in this shape. Make sure you twist your bristles and your brush so that you can cut closer. And if you go a little bit over the line, it's okay. Make sure you don't have a dry brush because then the texture will look really rough and scratchy. Couple little shadows up here the stem and under the leaf and then the stem is the same value and that is it for number four last one number five this is our darkest value so still this is mostly orange it's a little bit more more black added into it. Um, let's start with my little shapes first. Whoa. Twist your bristles. If you notice your paint starting to get dry too, you can get a spray bottle of just water in it and lightly spray your palette 
you don't want to have too much water mixed into it because then it dilutes it and temper paint is supposed to be opaque which means that you don't see through it um, if you mix too much water in it it becomes transparent Number five, down here. Just a couple more little spots and then I can use my bigger flat brush to finish it up. little shape. Um, notice I use my pinky like a little little kickstand. You might not be able to see it very well. So I put my pinky down to support my hand and then kind of pivot on it. Helps get into tight spaces and keep your hand steady. Almost finished. I'll finish the rest with my bigger brush so it goes a little quicker. You want to use the right tool for the right space. There we have it. So every space, it's like a paint by number. We'll finish painting this square up here for the value scale to show the full range of value. And then now you know how to apply value to different planes. The next step is to 
blur the lines between the different values and then they become gradients and you will be painting them like like you are shading them to show a real implied form. There you have it.